When Binary Art started in 1985, one of its first products released was a logic puzzle titled Spin Out. This consisted of a long sheet of plastic that had a number of dials on it. You can picture them kind of like the dials in the front of a stove you turn on to light the gas, where they have arrows pointing up the dials were circular, but they had some divots on the side. And your challenge was to turn the dials in certain ways and that would let you unlock another dial and you could turn that. And eventually you could figure out how to get them all instead of pointing vertically, pointing horizontally, and you could slide this piece of plastic out of the holder that it was locked into as long as any of the dials were vertical. That was one of its first releases. Another early puzzle was titled Top Spin. This was a plastic device that had a groove in it with numbered disc that you could slide around. It had a circle on it where you would have some of the disc and you could rotate the circle to change the orientation of those tokens. So you just flip the circle 180 degrees, you slide tokens, you flip it again and so on. And the numbered disc started out in disarray and you had to put them in order. So those were great puzzles. I worked in a game store from 1991 to 93 and we did a lot of those puzzles. We had demos where we could take them home and try them out just so we could learn what we we're doing as we we're trying to talk to people about what we're selling. But the binary arts model seemed to really change in 1996 with the tremendous success of Rush Hour, where instead of just having a puzzle, a naked puzzle where you just had to have the appeal of the puzzle itself, instead you had a setting in a world that you can picture yourself. You're not just sliding things around to try to get this block out of a grid. No, you were trying to get a car out of a traffic jam by directing traffic and moving things around. It gives a much more compelling way to sell the story by embedding it in this world. And you can ignore that if you want, if you don't care about the story, it doesn't matter. You can just ignore it, but it's there and it helps people. And it's kind of fun to have the cars you slide around and you can imagine things happening and then you get the car free, ideally. And that model has continued for most of the puzzle releases from Binary Arts, which over the years changed its name to Think Fun. That's what brings me to Invasion of the Cow Snatchers. Yes, you are going to effectively control this UFO and you are going to try to suck cows up into space. Not literally, because that would be weird and cows do not fit inside this box. Let me show you how this works. Here are most of the components in Invasion of the Cow Snatchers with you riding in a UFO over this field in order to pick up all the cows and the lone bull in this field with the arrangement of the animals and the fences being determined by the puzzle card that you are looking at. In traditional Think Fun style, you have a set of numbered puzzles that are more difficult as you continue through them with the final 20 puzzles being genius level. They present a specific challenge that we'll get to in a moment that uses the crop circle tokens that are otherwise not used. So you set up the fences and the animals in a particular arrangement, and you're going to pick them up with your UFO that has magnetic technology that will suck those cows right up to it. But you do not put your UFO directly on the cows. Instead, you have this plastic sheet that lets you ride above the field. Now, the challenge of doing that is that you can go wherever you wish in an orthogonal manner, manner, that is horizontal or vertical, diagonal movement is not allowed, and you must pick up the bull last. So, this is the challenge presented to you. You know you must pick up that bull last, and as you fly around, you are going to pick up the cows as you go over them. Now, the challenge comes from the presence of the walls that are dividing up the field. The red wall rises all the way to the top of the plastic sheet. So if I try to go up, that cow is just going to fall off. And that means you have done something incorrectly because no cow should ever be forced to fall to its doom. It would not survive a fall of that height. So once you pick something up, you have to keep it but the green wall is slightly shorter, which you can see if we line up these right here, it is one cow's width shorter. So I can move this UFO down. I can pass over the green wall, pick up that blue cow, pick up the red bull, and I've completed that puzzle. 
So on the back of the card, it shows you what the order that you will pick things up in and the color order that the cow should be in when you have completed the puzzle. So of course they are more difficult as you continue. You take off the top, you rearrange the pieces. In certain puzzles, you add a silo and you cannot fly over the silo at all. Doesn't matter whether you have a cow dangling below your ship or not, you can't do it. It's just not allowed. So you lay everything out as presented in the challenge. Put this up here, put the ship down here, and now you proceed. And of course, the setup of the puzzle gives you some direction as to what you should try to do. The bowl must be picked up last, so you cannot go down. Instead, you must go to the left or up. And when you do that, well, you can figure out what you're gonna do. If I pick up this, I can fly over this green wall, but I can't go back this way. And if I pick up this one, well, I can't go over the silo, I can't go over this wall, I have to come around. However, the white wall only lets two pieces by, which means that is not the way to solve the puzzle. So the challenge, as always in all of these puzzles, is to figure out which way to go in order to pick up things in the right order so that everything can come out and you can collect all of those pieces. The rules for invasion of the cow snatchers do not name the creator of the concept of the puzzle, but it does name the creator of the 60 challenges included in the box. And that person is Bob Hearn, and he's a pretty interesting guy. I looked up his background just because I was curious of what else he has done. He got his degree in 2006 from MIT with a thesis titled Games, Puzzles, and Computation, where he was looking at a large number of different logic puzzles and talking about their difficulty, how hard they are mathematically, and how they can be equivalent to other things. So one of the things he looked at was sliding block puzzles, which is a specialty of his, and he had shown in an earlier paper co-written with someone else that sliding block puzzles are P-space complete, which means essentially that you could do computations with them because they have particular states they're in and they can change states and they can transform from one state to another through particular processes. And it shows that they are P-space complete and worthy of, not worthy, potentially something that you can compute with. Of course, you would probably need an incredibly large sliding block puzzle and it would be far more challenging to do that than to use an actual computer, but it's possible. He also looked at a number of other puzzles by ThinkFun in that paper, such as Tip Over and Rush Hour, which is itself a sliding block puzzle, but with cars instead of blocks. So now he is working with ThinkFun to make puzzles for this game, and this is kind of a sliding block puzzle in disguise with little twist based on the height of the fences because not all blocks are created equal or at least not all spaces are created equal in terms of where the blocks can go. I've jumped ahead to puzzle 21, the first puzzle in the hard category, to give you a demonstration of a more complex puzzle and also to show how you might think about solving these puzzles as you are working your way through the stack. As always, you must pick up the Red Bull last, so you are instead looking at the three cows that are presented to you and trying to see what order you might have to pick them up in. Now, of course, you can bumble around and just pick something up and then try to pick something else up. I gotta stay away from the red, but now I can't get into the orange one, so clearly that's not the way to go. Instead, you can start looking more particularly at each of the cows and you can see that the orange cow is surrounded by a red wall on this side, which means it can't go out this way. It's got the silo on the other side, can't go out this way. It can't go out over the red one because the red one has to be picked up last. Hmm. And it's got a green wall here, which allows only one cow to go over it. So the orange cow must be picked up first. This is the only way I can go out with that orange cow. And now I figure out, well, do I pick up the purple or the yellow next? The white wall lets only two cows go over it. So I must pick up that one next. I can then come around and pick up the yellow one and finally pick up the red and we're done. 
The first 40 challenges of Invasion of the Cow Snatchers all work this way. You set up the walls, you put the cows down in the bowl, the sky comes in, the UFO comes in, and then whoo, try to pick up everything and be on your way to the next challenge. Now you can bumble around and try to figure out how things work at random. Just keep in mind, oh, I can bring nothing over the red wall and nothing goes over the silo and this goes here and so forth. And you just try to figure it out. Or as I demonstrated in the last puzzle, you start looking at it and then stripping away everything else and just saying, okay, that cow has to be picked up first and that's second and that's third and here we go. And now I actually put my hand on the UFO and then I just confirm, yep, done. And it feels a little anticlimactic because the puzzle was all just solved in my head rather than me actually moving around the UFO and doing things and sort of figuring out as I went because nothing changes until you start going. If you want to think of it that way, unlike rush hour where it's harder for me at least to picture the blocks as you're moving them. And now you've got a different challenge. You have an opening where there wasn't an opening before. Here, everything is laid out for you and nothing changes. So for the most part, the final 30 challenges in that set, the from 11 to 40, kind of felt the same because I would figured out the trick for me was just looking at them and abstractly being like, okay, this can go out first or second. This can only go out first. This can go out whenever. This one has to be picked up last because it's right next to red and there's other walls around it. Okay, done. And then we go on. So it wasn't learning different skills. For example, when I did lunar landing and one of another videos in this series, you learn particular skills as you progress through the puzzles. First moving just you as you're trying to land on the port to get back into the spaceship. And then, oh, I can move the robot first to make me have something to bank against so that I can actually hit that point. Oh, then I can learn I can move me and then I can move something else and then I move me again and then move something else again. So you learn sort of different levels. It's not anything onerous or too complex that you're doing, but it feels like you're learning a skill at certain puzzles as you progress through it. And with this one, I felt like I got the trick and then mostly I was just staring and then I'd solve it. But that all changed with puzzle 41. Once you get to level 41, you're adding a new element to these puzzles and that is the crop circle. Each puzzle uses one or more crop circles along with the other pieces. You layer everything out here. You see more examples of these. And the crop circle allows you to drop off one or more cows and then pick them up later before you pick up the bull at the end. You can never drop off the bull at the crop circle. The bull must always be the last thing you pick up. And all five tokens are in play for all of these puzzles and they must always in the end be in the order of purple closest to the UFO and then yellow, orange, blue, red. So you have to figure out how to manipulate things in order to end up in that order with this particular arrangement. So if I were trying to pick up things now with purple first and then yellow and then orange, I can't get over this wall with the orange and there is no way to do it without the use of the crop circle, which lets you drop something off. So how you do that, well, I can go here, pick up the yellow, it goes over the green wall, which lets only one token buy. I go to the crop circle. I lift my UFO up, drop the cow off, and then I place the UFO one space horizontally or vertically away from where the crop circle is located. So I can place it down here, pick up this purple one, come back and get the yellow now. And now I get the orange, blue, red, and done in the order shown on the card. The puzzles get way more challenging once you add the option of dropping them off because now the arrangement is not static. Now you have a much more difficult time trying to figure out how to move things around in order to get everything in the right space, in the right time. Let's see, let's set this up quickly. Lay this out, lay this out. Okay, there we go. So, given this particular arrangement here, let's take the UFO off for a moment. The red walls here mean that nothing can come through this way. This is all dead space. 
This is also effectively dead space because it doesn't even matter. So everything must come and eventually pick up this last so you can use, whoops, so you can use this sort of as a holding point for things as you're moving them around and trying to rearrange things and get them to the right order, which again is purple first, then yellow, then orange, blue, red. So how do you do that as you're moving things around? You can still fly up here, but it doesn't matter. But you can do things like, well, I can pick this up, move it over here, drop it off. I can pick up the purple, and now I've got these two in the proper order and I can drop them off here or here. Does that matter? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. What if I drop them off here? And then fly here. I can pick up orange and then blue. Uh, my wall got destroyed. But now if I come over here, I'm going to pick them up in the wrong order. And it doesn't matter what I do at that point to drop them off. Hmm, something's not right here. What? do I do? The genius level puzzles live up to their name as they are way more difficult than the first 40 challenges in the box. Invasion of the Cow Snatchers is listed as for ages six and up. I have tried it only with a nine-year-old as that's the age my son was when I first got this on a review copy from Think Fun. And you can definitely go through and bumble around with those first challenges and figure out how things work. It's kind of a toy as much as well puzzle where you can just knock the cows off the wall because you don't care. It's just kind of fun to do that and ram them around and knock them all over the place. But you can figure out how to do things just by trial and error, getting things out there. But once you get to 41, just difficulty level ramps up extremely. That first one I showed you was not bad, but once you get to later ones, they are quite involved. And it has a solution on the back where it often just goes on and on and on where you are seeing how to move the UFO, which color you're picking up, what you're dropping off, where you're moving things around. You move one to one place, you move to another place, then you gotta move that other one on top. You move here and here and here. And it's really like a train switching problem, a track switching problem, where you're trying to get trains in the proper order to a particular location. So you're melding this train switching with sliding block puzzle to put everything together with this challenge. And I have not yet gotten past puzzle 49. 49 just wrecked me for the longest time, just trying, 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 and eventually figuring out, yes, this is how it works. It didn't, I didn't initially grok the whole track switching issue, but that's really what it is, where you kind of have to clear the way at a certain point, move things around, kind of like just when you were moving house and you're trying to get two certain boxes in the room. Well, okay, we figure out these can go over on the side right now. I pull these out and now we unload the dishes and then we do something else. And oh, then we gotta dig out something else and move things around again and eventually get everything into the right rooms. And that's what we're doing in this, but it is way harder than the first 40 challenges. Or maybe I'm, I my mentality topped out at that point and it just, it killed me at that point. I can't do anymore. So it's, Interesting to see those first batch of problems felt very similar to me, and then suddenly we hit a much steeper level of difficulty at a certain point. So I don't know if your experience will be the same. You'll have to try it to find out and see how that works for you. One other issue I've had with Invasion of the Cow Snatchers comes from me by chance getting a second copy of it. So. Think Fun messed up, or I was on multiple mailing lists and I ended up getting two copies of the game. I mean, that's kind of good because my exchange student recently, Lisa was solving with one and I was solving with the other and we were kind of racing with them to see how quickly we could go, but I had already done them before, so I had a head start. So over time, the plastic definitely gets worn out. So this is the newer one, which you can probably see me through better than the older one, which is way scratchier because I have played or solved on this one a lot more. So this does get uh, a bit grittier over time, but you can still see the pieces. That's not an issue. One other issue I had with the board was that at certain, certain points, the green puzzle here would not let any cow over in particular locations in the center of this grid. And I think either the plastic on top was bowed down a little or the, the bottom part was bowed up a little. And so there wasn't the right clearance for that cow. And I haven't had an issue with the other set and I've just bent this one a bit and now it's all worked out. So you may have to do that as well in order to get everything working properly. But 
you can get it done. And then you can see how you do with the puzzles. Uh, unlike a lot of the older Think Fun puzzles, this one does not have a bag included to hold all the pieces. And that's mostly because there are a lot of pieces. You just need your own zip baggie to put all the fences in, the cow pieces, the UFO, the puzzles. Cards come in their own box, so you can you can store them in a box if you wish, but you will need something to hold everything else. And at that point, you might as well just put it in the box because you've got this thing, which is kind of the size of the box itself with this on top of it. So you may as well just bring the whole box at that point and stop worrying about having a bag to make it more portable because you also want to protect it and not lose any cows along the way or else you'll never be able to pick them up. If you want to take a break from the logic puzzles, you can participate in a side challenge of sorts with the magnets included in Invasion of the Cow Snatchers. The instructions mention, of course, make sure these pieces don't break open and your children don't eat them. You have to be prepared because they are fairly strong magnets, but that also means that you can play with them in a very particular way. Very few people have played the game Polarity, but this is what you're trying to do in the game Polarity. You're playing with magnets the whole time and trying to balance them in very precarious and unusual ways. And you can do that with the UFO and some of the cow pieces in this set. Place the UFO on the table, perhaps on a tablecloth to add a little more friction versus playing on a smooth surface. And then try to balance those pieces against the UFO. There's nothing there. It's just the magnetic force that's hovering them there in place. You have to be just the right distance so they don't fall on the table and they don't get sucked into the UFO. So it's a nice little fun challenge. The game Polarity uses this as one of the elements where you are trying to balance things in play. And it looks really cool when you can do it. Give it a try.